basketball is weak. You know, <laughs> anybody can shoot the ball and, and get tennis shoes and, and jersey deals, but go out there and, and find yourself looking at Nolan Ryan and you got to face him and how can you turn on the fastball? That's very difficult. Well, baseball was booming. Baseball was booming in the early 80s. You had players uh, coming through farm systems. You had players coming up, playing at the major league level for all teams, great players like Sheffield, Ricky Henderson, Winsfield, Dawson, we're all here today, but you have many more, Junior, you had Eric Davis. You don't go get a hot dog when Ricky Henderson is hit. You don't get get a hot dog with Dale Strawberry, or Sheffield, Dawson, and Winfield. You get three hot dogs with Jerry Manuel hit, and they know know everything's gonna be all right. But but yet but yet and still, they 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 brought a special flair that was carried from the Hank Aaron's, the Willie Mays, and those types of guys that kept our game to where people like Michael Jordan wanted to play. Deion Sanders. You know, you had tons of African-American players playing on each team that was really making a statement and fashion about baseball. And, and it was cool to play baseball. And I, I think a lot of times most people don't realize how cool it was to watch, watch all these guys play. I was, you know, from Barry Bonds and his one earring, you know, to the Lionel DeShields, who was the, the first guy to wear high socks and the first guy to wear high top cleats and Daryl Strawberry with his white all-star cleats and Ozzie Smith flipping on the field and Deion Sanders cutting his sleeves. It was all these intangibles um, that African-American players brought um, to the game of baseball. The game got to be a lost commodity, especially um, in the urban cities. And that's, what's, that's something we're trying to restore. Major League Baseball is really taking on drastic measures uh, to rebuild, recreate uh, playing facilities, environments conducive for the kids. And that's just a start. I think getting them back out to ball games, getting the leaders in the communities more inclined to uh, go out and teach these kids the game. Football and basketball has seemed to take a precedent, but uh, that's where we are. That's you know, it's where we're trying to get is still probably a ways off, but we're definitely working in a positive direction. We need to do more. Baseball need to do more. I know they talk about it, but it, you know, they need to do more. They need to build academies in America and let kids learn to play in the academies and let kids learn to grow, grow in the inner cities and from all areas um, that they can come and play together and, and learn the game of baseball. And, we need to bring attraction of, of what baseball is all about. Well, you know, we had a lot of we had a lot of African Americans playing when I came in. It was all it was close to 40 percent, 30 percent, something like that. And, and just the fact that it's going down is a contribute to travel ball because it eliminates kids from playing in their little league. You know, I see a lot of time where kids will go play in a travel ball game opposed to his little league game. So it suffers, and what that does is that that alienates us because we don't have the money to do that. And then kids in the inner city don't have the money to travel. They don't have the money to, to buy those bats and gloves. And so, you know, we, we're trying to do our part as much as we can to help these kids out. Uh, it's getting better and it's getting stronger. The RBI program reached a certain level, but I think we've got to figure out a way to take it to another level because we don't want all, all African American kids just playing basketball and football. They need to, to really reach out to baseball because athletes are gifted, it's fast, speed, and not coordination, baseball is a longevity situation. There's a number of reasons, well, and, and one of the reasons is to pay for play. I'm not getting on the people that have those resources to to, to do that, but but they're kind of cherry picking the best players and scholarship in them, where there are some players that are not quite developed that become Hall of Famers that don't get an opportunity to play and play other sports. So if, if we could do anything to help create an uh, interest that, you know, baseball is cool and it's less expensive and there's longevity. You look at all these guys that come in here, they're walking around, boom, boom, boom. They're not having any issues or what have you. But our social economic platform right now with, with our community is that 
we have 70% single family homes. So pay for play not gonna work for us. I, I think baseball, MLB has to come together with some of the former great players, not just players, you know, that that played at this level, but some of the former great baseball players that played at this level and that understands baseball and, and that can bring young people uh, to feel good about playing the game of baseball. I, I think they don't feel good. And if you show them some history of your highlights, then, then they'll see these guys are cool. These guys were real, you know. Uh, but if they don't see that, they don't know. Well, you know, you give your time and sometimes your money, you know, and uh, in, in, in most cases it's always give your money, and uh, which we'd have no problem doing. It's just you want these kids to be an organized ball just like everybody else and being seen by the same scouts. And that's the key to it all, you know, not just getting out playing, but giving them opportunity to make it and these same scouts get to see them as well. There's a number of issues that we're wrestling and we're just trying to cross things off the board that we come up with, like we came up with the diversity committee. Just trying to check things off and say, hey, let's see if we can get it back. And hopefully, hopefully this is a way that we can do that.